What's up everyone, welcome back to another video with the Millennial Finance. Over the past few months, I've actually been focusing almost exclusively on NFTs, which means that my stock portfolio is held solely just for the long term and I'm not doing any trades there. It's not just me as well, there are a lot of people who are starting to join this NFT game and the market is really starting to expand into more people. I've already made a few videos about NFTs like Steppen and I've also shared my journey so far. Now, I'll be sharing exactly how and where to start, starting with today's video on which blockchain you should use to start your NFT journey. Let's get started. Cha ching So first of all, we must address the most basic question which is, which blockchain can I trade NFTs on? Well, technically, blockchains are just the underlying technology and there can be NFTs on any of those chains. The two most popular ones by far are Ethereum and Solana, but there are some in other chains as well like Nier and Cardano, but I haven't explored any of them. Even though there may be NFTs on other blockchains, in this video, I'll be focusing purely on the top two ones being Ethereum and Solana because in my opinion, the other NFT ecosystems are just not mature enough and there's not enough volume for us to trade reliably. So before we get into ETH versus Sol NFTs, I must address what is the difference in technology between these two chains. To give some context as well, Ethereum is considered one of the OGs in the cryptocurrency space and is currently the second largest cryptocurrency only behind Bitcoin. This is mainly due to, in my opinion, that they were one of the first comers in this space. On the other hand, Solana is still relatively new and Ethereum has a market cap of $250 billion, which is more than 10 times what Solana currently has. So in terms of technology, Ethereum currently still uses a proof of work mechanism, which is why you still hear people saying that they're mining Ethereum with their computers. This is similar to what Bitcoin is doing, but there are a lot of concerns with this way of validating blockchain transactions. On the other hand, Solana, similar to nearly every other L1 blockchain out there, uses a proof of stake mechanism, which means that as long as you're staking your Solana, then you are contributing to the blockchain's transaction speed. So because of this, the first major thing for us to compare are the transaction fees. For Solana, they have extremely low fees per transaction. Every single one of them is so incredibly small that I don't know the number, but it is less than one cent. On the other hand, Ethereum fees can be very high depending on the type of transaction and how congested the network is at the time that you're trying to do it. If you're just doing a simple transaction like sending Ethereum from one wallet to another, then fees can be relatively cheap. It can go under $5. Most of the times it's between $5 and $10. However, I have seen situations where people pay more than $2,000 just in fees alone to the Ethereum blockchain. To give you guys an example, recently, the biggest NFT by far, the Bored 8 Yacht Club, recently dropped another mint which was of course extremely hyped because people wanted to get in early and then quickly flip for a profit or hold it long term where it's almost guaranteed profits. Because so many people were trying to make a transaction at the same time, there was congestion and gas fees rose by so much and based on blockchain data, in total, people spent over $180 million just in fees. That is extremely high and it is not something that you will ever see on the Solana blockchain. Another difference due to the different mechanisms is that Ethereum has much lower transactions per second, hovering around 5 to 10, whereas Solana can go up to 2,000 or even 3,000 transactions per second. What this means is that globally, if let's say all of us are trying to make a transaction on Ethereum, we're trying to send um, some ETH from our Luna wallet to our MetaMask, well, at any given second, only 10 to 15 transactions can happen. This means that Solana, of course, at this current moment has way faster transaction speeds compared to Ethereum. One thing to take note of though is that Ethereum 2.0 will look to resolve this. They are moving from a proof of work to a proof of stake mechanism just like Solana, but I have no idea when this will launch. Apparently, it's supposed to launch, you know, so many different times, but it's just not happening yet. So on paper, based off what I just said, it seems like everything seems to be pointing towards Solana as the superior blockchain compared to Ethereum, but the fact that Ethereum is more established, has a larger market cap, and hasn't had any downtime means that we cannot rule it out. As a cryptocurrency investment, I would probably put more into Ethereum than Solana. However, today's video isn't about investing into Ethereum versus Solana, but rather their NFTs ecosystem. 
So let's see what the differences are. So first of all, just like its blockchain, Ethereum NFTs are also much larger than your Solana counterparts. The biggest Ethereum NFTs as of the time that I'm recording this video is the Bar 8 Yacht Club or BAYC and it has a floor price of 96 Ethereum. As a comparison, the largest Solana project right now, which is The Gods, currently has a floor of 272 Solana, which is just under 7 Ethereum. So just by that, you can already see that the largest Ethereum NFT is more than 13 times the price of the largest Solana NFT. In terms of market cap as well, Ethereum NFTs just blow Solana projects out of the water. Historically, Ethereum projects were also much more popular which meant that there were more users, there were more transactions and there is more dollar volume flowing every single day as well. Very recently though, Solana NFTs actually managed to flip Ethereum in terms of not just transactions but even more impressively in terms of weekly users. What this means is that more people are actually engaged into Solana NFT projects versus Ethereum. So this is a big event in my opinion because historically, like I said, Ethereum was the king of NFTs. However, one thing that Ethereum still holds over Solana is that the dollar volume of their NFT projects is still more than double what Solana has. In terms of what the NFTs do, Solana projects, in my opinion at least, usually have a lot more utility simply due to the higher transaction speeds and the lower transaction fees like I was saying earlier. So it's not that the NFT project owners in Solana are just so much smarter or so much better, it's just how the blockchain is set up and they have to adapt to what that is. Most Ethereum projects out there are really focused on building brands and communities. Solana has that as well, but there are also many different projects that are looking to build stuff like tech companies or even payment solutions in the real world. For example, I hold an NFT project in Solana that is giving out payment terminals in Southeast Asia where people can then pay with USDC or back then UST to a merchant. This in my opinion is real utility and as an NFT owner, you will get a share of the profits that they make. So when you first hear this, again, you might think, why would I ever go to Ethereum NFTs when Solana has so much more utility, um, hype and branding, what does it even matter? But when you get into the NFT space, then you will find out that that is not really the case. Branding is still extremely popular in NFTs and many people want to hold a part of the project just to feel like they belong to a community or simply just to flex. So I've talked a lot, but where do I recommend you start? Based off all of the things that we were talking about earlier, my pick for newcomers would have to be 100% to start with Solana NFTs. I may be a bit biased because my entire bag is actually in this ecosystem. However, the fact that Solana NFTs have better utility, we're starting to see more users come in every single week, and the fact that the entry barrier is much lower justifies my decision. And the last point that I mentioned on entry barriers is especially important for newcomers because some people, or maybe most people, don't want to put too much money when they start off. In my opinion at least, if you want to start into Ethereum NFTs, you would need at least one Ethereum, which at this point costs around $2,000, Whereas if you wanted to start into Solana NFTs, you can easily start with 10 Solana, which right now is only $500. Also, you won't have to pay all these gas fees, meaning you can buy and sell NFTs without having to think about it too much. So like most people, I actually started my NFT journey in Ethereum just because it was so popular. At that point, I didn't even know any other blockchain had an NFT ecosystem. However, I quickly found out about Solana and I've made switch and since then, I completely abandoned Ethereum NFTs and at this point, I don't think I'll be going back. I know of people who have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions just on Ethereum gas fees and that's not really my thing. You can probably make a lot more money in Ethereum if you're successful just because there's so much more volume going on there, but I'd say Solana is a better bet especially if you're a newcomer. So, while both blockchains definitely have their pros and cons, my bet is fully on Solana right now. In the future, things could change of course, I might go back to Ethereum, especially with the introduction of Ethereum 2.0 if that ever comes. Let me know down in the comments below, which blockchain do you prefer to invest your NFTs in? I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it educational. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below or drop us a DM on Instagram. We'll be happy to chat. Thanks for watching this video to the end guys, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.